Hello viewers, I'm SB and welcome to Renowned Explorers. I've actually played this game quite a bit on the channel, although it has been a while, so if this is the first time you've ever seen this game, don't worry, you won't get lost, I will explain everything that's happening. Uh, today we're playing Renowned Explorers to celebrate the fact that they've just hit their 100th weekly community challenge. Sometime after the game released, the developers started posting weekly challenges in the Steam forums to give people kind of a different way to play the game, maybe to encourage you to find new strategies that you might not have otherwise used, or just see the game in a different way. There's really a lot of stuff in this game. There are, there are things that you might easily miss. Um, and then at some point, it became too much work for the developers had to start focusing on other things. You know, they gotta make new games and stuff. Uh, and so community members stepped up and kept the community challenges alive, which I think is super cool. This game has a great community. And this week is their 100th community challenge. Most of the challenges are just like, play the game in this way and here's some additional scoring criteria and then we'll all like compare our scores and talk about how fun it was. But this time to celebrate the 100th week is a cooperative challenge. Anybody can play the game and submit a score in the thread and we're trying to, as a whole, as a community, build up a great big pile of resources and if we hit certain thresholds, some things will happen. I'm not even 100% sure what. The devs are being a little cryptic about it, but somehow those who can participate in the challenge will be immortalized in the game, which is just a super cool idea. And I, you know, I've been looking for an excuse to come back to this. So today we're going to play through just a whole game of renowned explorers for the purpose of contributing to the community challenge. Now, the community challenge is just about generating resources. We're going to ignore the normal scoring mechanism of the game. We're just trying to generate a lot of gold and research and status. In addition, there are, there's a bonus for all of the characters being used in the challenge. Each time we use the entire roster, we get some bonuses toward our completion. So today, we're going to be playing as Wang Yu because at the time of this recording, he is a little underserved. Uh, he could he could use another completion or two. So, a character in Renowned Explorers is made up of a lot of different little parts. You have some abilities that you'll, you'll use during encounters, and they're not just attacks. You know, in a lot of games that are about sort of like Jules Vernian adventures across the globe where you're taking treasures from various places, and you know, a lot of these adventure type games, there's a lot of focus on combat and stuff. Renowned Explorers is a little bit different in the tone that it takes to these things. It's a very like Saturday morning cartoon, and you can actually, you can resolve your encounters by attacking and being aggressive and fighting people, but you can talk your way out of everything. And there's a couple of different ways to do that even. You can be devious and manipulate people. You can just make friends with everybody everywhere you go. So there's some cool stuff going on. Uh, you have your abilities, Every character has some perks. There are a bunch of different perk categories, and then the perks that your characters have will give you options and advantages during the challenges you encounter. Uh, you have every character has a little level up perk tree. At each level, we'll make a decision like at level two, do I want to become a weapons expert or a tinkerer? And then uh, you have some stats and stuff. We'll talk about all of this stuff as it becomes relevant. In addition, each character has a couple of campfire cards. We'll make camp once on each expedition, and our deck of things that might happen, our deck of cards representing the things that might happen when we're camping, is largely determined by our party. And then finally, in addition, the character that you put in the top slot of your party is the captain, and each character has a different perk that they add to the party when they're a captain. And some of these are, like, pretty transformative. They really change the way you play the game and the way you evaluate options. Um, there's a lot of stuff in this game. It has a lot of small, simple systems that interact with each other in interesting and complex ways. It's just a, a really, really great design. So we're going to be playing as Wang Yu, like I said. His deal is we get two encounter tokens whenever he succeeds on the adventure wheel, and our encounter tokens give us extra research. Um, if you don't know what that means yet, don't worry. You will soon. And we're going to take with us Earl and Yvonne, I decided, before the adventure, and hopefully the reasons for all this stuff will become clear as we go on. But for a little bit of background, Yvonne is like a socialite, internationally famous kind of, I don't know, I feel like this kind of thing used to be 
I guess, a little a little bit more common. Although I suppose at this point, you know, we have a lot of international celebrities. Maybe. Never mind that thing I just said. You know what kind of thing I'm talking about. She's an international celebrity. She's basically famous for being rich. Uh, she's beguiling. She's also kind of a rogue. And she likes yelling at people. She's kind of mean. One thing that is really cool about this game is that every character does have a personality beyond the mechanics. There are hidden character traits that will affect how they react in various situations. And even after you've played the game for like a hundred hours, you still will, running into a situation you've been in before with a new character, discover new interactions and stuff. It's really... there's a huge amount of content in this game. And Earl is kind of... Earl's a little dim-witted. Uh, but he sure does love explosives. Which makes him a good fit with uh, with Wang Yu, who also really loves explosives and combustion and artillery and dynamite. So we're sort of the bad guys in this story. That's not necessarily the case with all parties, but it sure is with ours. But we're going to be starting on the Celtic Code Expedition. We're playing in adv Adventure Mode, Classic Difficulty, and let's get to it. So in a game of Renowned Explorers, you take on five expeditions. And then between expeditions, you go back to London and you spend your resources on various things. But the first thing we do here, this first expedition, is just about let's gather some resources to sort of get our get our machine kickstarted. So this is it. We just got our Renowned Explorers International Society membership. Yu wants to make a big entrance and wants to investigate a, myst a mystic appearance, a druidic stone circle. Rumor has it that Celtic Druids set up a sect here a long time ago. So each expedition is a procedurally generated map of nodes connected by paths that each have a supply cost. We have eight supplies. We use supplies to move around the island. When we run out of supplies, we'll start to take some pretty harsh penalties for hunger. So you don't want to spend a lot of time running around the island with no food, but... It's not the end of the world if you take a couple. So you can see each node has symbols on it that tell us what to expect. This node will probably yield some research, which is one of the three resources that we're interested in accumulating. This node will have a nature challenge that may require an athlete or a naturalist or a survivalist. Let's go to this node. In general, I like to go to the ones with the most symbols because they're the most complicated. <laughs> so the crew traverses an area that looks like it's never before been trodden. Yvonne finds a weird colorful stone that looks valuable. The crew goes to take a look. Sadly, closer up, the stone doesn't look so fancy at, at all. The crew just waves it away as some common pebble. You, however, thinks there's more to the stone and jots down some observations before leaving. So uh, we get some... we got a token from that. So we're going to pick up tokens over the course of the adventure. Then when we get back to London, between the expeditions, all of our tokens will be converted into the resources. We'll use the resources to buy, basically, stuff that will make us better at collecting more tokens. And that's the way it works. It's very familiar if you've played a lot of, like, resource engine type board games or even um, 4X games. Just It's a very common sort of resource engine sort of thing. And then the goal at the end of the game normally is to convert all of your resources into Renown, which is your victory point score. And in order to win, you have to hit a certain threshold of Renown. We are not interested in Renown this game. For the purposes of the community challenge, we're just trying to accumulate as many resources as possible. Okay, this node has an encounter. This will be... This should be good. A group of wolves is being very protective and territorial. They're launching an attack on you. Okay, we can handle some wolves. So if you're familiar with these kinds of stories, um, like I, I think I called out Jules Verne earlier, but also like some Kipling and stuff. You know, there's like wild animal attacks, and then we find a... The hidden temple or something, and we take an ancient idol. You're probably familiar with the sort of story that this is. So, the encounter system, like I said, allows us to resolve things aggressively, deviously, or friendlyly, in a friendly manner. And each encounter will have one of those outcomes, friendly, devious, or aggressive. In many encounters, you'll get additional rewards for ending them in certain uh, moods. So here, if we end this devious, we'll get an extra encounter token. As you can see, encounter tokens give a whole bunch of resources. These are great. So we definitely want to end this encounter devious. So uh, for the simplest version of this, we'll just only use devious attacks. We'll go into more depth about the encounter system as we go on. But every character has one attack 
that fits each of the attitudes. And you can see the opponent's attitude up here is currently aggressive. So we're going to lead off with a devious attack. And see, our attitude now is devious, and there's a little rock, paper, scissors thing going on. Devious beats aggressive, aggressive beats friendly, friendly beats devious. So because we're in the mood, or we're in the attitude that is superior to their attitude, we get a bonus of 25 grit, which is basically just dodge. Um, they couldn't call it dodge, because this is a game where your, uh... Sometimes the attacks are people trying to convince you of things, and you can't really dodge. Conceptually, that's a little tricky. So we had to give it a more abstract name. So we're just going to launch devious attacks on these wolves. We're going to shout at them and annoy them and tell them that their face is as stupid as a stupid dog face. And that will bum them out enough that they will stop fighting us. You also can just make friends with the wolves if you want to be friendly. Our party is very poorly suited to being friendly. Oh man, Earl is getting messed up over here. It turns out that uh, wolves have no problem just biting your face off. No matter how much you annoy and sadden them. So we bum these wolves out, and they flee. There's a lot of stuff happening here that I'm not explaining. Don't worry about it. We'll get there. For these first, uh, this first simple encounter, I just want to show you. You know, if you've ever played a tactics game, this probably looks familiar. The, the map is made roughly of hexagons. The, uh, the spaces are a little irregular in shape. But, um, you know, you just move around, do an attack, and that's your turn. So, we got two encounter tokens for completing the encounter. You always get two encounter tokens. We got a third encounter token for finishing it in the right mood, or the right attitude, rather. And then, at the end of each encounter, one of your party members, randomly chosen, gets a buff based on the attitude you ended the encounter with. And that buff lasts for the rest of the expedition. So, as you're devious, or friendly, or aggressive with the locals, that stuff starts to spread around. You sort of you accumulate a reputation on the island. The best way to beat such animals is by showing them who's boss. The wolves become intimidated by your presence and flee. The fleeing wolves are followed by crying pups who make it away safely. It's a pretty lighthearted thing. Nobody's going to die. Even if we had been aggressive there, it's not about killing the wolves. It's about draining their desire to continue fighting us. The crew finds an overgrown rock formation with some rare herbs growing on it. However, Yvonne recognizes that useful minerals might be in the rock. Yvonne is curious to see what more is in there. The crew is now in a dilemma. Earl wants to save the plants for research, while Yvonne is giddy to see what more is in the rock, albeit at the cost of destroying the, herb, the, the herb's habitat. It's very difficult for me to do one silent H and then a non-silent H, apparently. So we can, uh, we can follow herbs, Earl's advice and save the plants, or follow... Yvonne's advice, and maybe maybe we'll get cool stuff, but also maybe not. I think we're going to go for research. You decide to save those herbs for the sake of science. Others can now come here and investigate these rarities for themselves. Yvonne is kind of disappointed, however. Well, she's going to have to deal with it. So, I like research a lot in the early game. Um, the chance of getting some gold there was interesting, but I think we want we want to focus on research as much as possible for now. What a strange noise. Music is coming from a meadow, but there's no one in sight. It seems that the wind, in combination with some strange type of twin flower, is making the sound. You listen for a while to the beautiful sound and make a note of the phenomenon. Alright, so after we've hit a certain number of nodes in each expedition, we'll be allowed to make camp. Let's, uh, yeah, let's go ahead and do that. So we have this deck of campfire cards. Uh, most of the cards in the deck were seeded by our unique explorers, so like this card is in here because Yvonne is really into secrets, this card is in here because, you know, we have a very engineering focused crew, and this card obviously is Wang Yu's personal story, so let's go ahead and play that one. After we play our campfire uh, card, we'll discard all of these cards and we'll draw new ones for the next campfire. We could choose to keep stuff in our hand to hold it so we can play it later. I'm not going to do that with any of these cards. We're just going to keep riffling through our deck here. So, Yu's strong personality is having an effect on the crew. Oops, Yu seems to have gone a little too far this time. 
He said that most explorers from the society are nothing but wannabe scrubs. Earl and Yvonne are trying to bring some nuance to his comments, but you blows them all off. Why, some of these explorers can't even find the society's toilet. Earl and Yvonne are getting a bit angry at you. How can he be so inconsiderate of other people? This is not how a renowned explorer should behave. So, Earl thinks that's not funny. Earl's pretty annoyed by this. You can see it on his face there. A green text option means that this is an option you have because of a character's unique personality. So, Yvonne is also kind of a mean person. Uh, so she thinks it's quite funny. I think let's, uh, let's, let's choose that response. So later, Yvonne walks up to you. While what he said was kind of rude, it was also rather funny. You is happy that someone takes his words positively. While Yvonne is on edge with him, she also knows where to go for a good laugh. They have a complicated relationship. So, the effect of that campfire card, let's, uh, right here, is that now we'll get plus two encounter tokens at the end of, the at the end of each expedition for each level of rivalry in our crew. And you can see we've now started to develop some rivalry. Your crew members will develop relationships with each other over the course of the game, and those relationships will generate bonus stats and perks and stuff. So you can see, because Earl doesn't like you, he's on edge a little bit, which has actually increased his speech and attack power. You does like Yvonne, he's a little starstruck, so he's got a, some extra speech power, he's trying to impress her now. Yvonne both is wary of you, but also likes the sense of humor. Uh, and you can see we're, we're already starting to accumulate a lot of, uh, a lot of complicated things here. Alright, let's go have a nature challenge. Sometimes you find a natural phenomenon that is worth researching. However, if you approach it incorrectly, your data might be useless. This is a lot more abstract than the text of these usually are. So this is our first encounter with the adventure wheel. When we click one of these buttons, the chosen person is going to spin the adventure wheel. You can see that, uh... Their chance of success is based on their traits. So there's a 10% base success chance on this this particular challenge. Then, Yu has an additional 8% from his speech defense, which is 12, so it's like, it's like two-thirds. If he was a scientist, he would get more chance, and if he was a naturalist, he'd get even more success chance. Earl has more speech defense and is a scientist, so he's much more likely to hit this. I think we're going to have Earl roll it. You can see that uh, the failure thing is no actual penalty here, but as we go on, we'll encounter more and more difficult challenges, and they'll start to have significant penalties for failure. However, we'll often have a choice like this, where we can just take a relatively small reward and not spin the wheel at all. That said, we almost always want to spin the wheel if we can afford to, because spinning the wheel generates experience points. Everybody's at 2 XP, because you get 2 XP whenever you complete an encounter. Uh, whoever spins the wheel here is going to get 2 more XP, and they'll level up. Hey, let's go ahead and do it with Earl. Earl's got the best chance of succeeding here. Oh, 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 no. Well, that's a shame. Sadly, Earl was not fully sharp and failed to find anything interesting about it. The other crew members, biased by Earl, cannot look at the phenomenon objectively. You leave without any significant fines. That's a shame. But spinning the wheel is always worth 2 XP, even if you fail. So Earl gets to choose between Engineer Combustion and Survivalist Navigation. We're going to have him learn Navigation, I think. Uh, just because I want to have as wide a base of perks as possible, it would be really cool if we could get a little bit of every perk category spread out over the party, just so that we're prepared a little bit for whatever challenges we find. Um, specialization is valuable. There will be difficult challenges that require you to have a lot of perks in particular groups, but right here, right now, at the beginning of the game, I think spreading out, gaining a breadth of capabilities is important. And, for leveling up to level 2, we also learned the experimentation skill in combat. So basically, Earl can engineer a chemical explosion, because again, we're kind of the bad guys in this story. Alright, this node potentially has treasure. We could veer off and grab this. We'll spend some extra supplies, and that can be dangerous. Um, the supply penalties have gotten a lot harsher since the last time I played the game, it turns out. And we could get ourselves into some trouble by running out of supplies, but... 
Like I said, it's kind of a resource engine game, and the more resources you accumulate early, the better you'll be uh, positioned to take advantage of opportunities later. So this day of exploring was not that exciting, but we did manage to find some rare edible mushrooms, which will make a great party gift. So now we've got a cool story about we found some mushrooms in this weird place, and so now we've gotten a little bit of status. This is basically, you build up status with the other explorers, and then you can invite them to your entourage, and we will end up with a bunch of helpers and specialists who will be giving us extra resources and lending us their expertise. Alright, let's figure out what's going on here. We've discovered a forest cliff. Out of nowhere, in the middle of the forest, a huge cliff stands before you. Such a geological rarity often holds exceptional treasures. You orders the crew to look around. The crew comes back to make an action plan. Earl mentions that there's plenty to find at the foot of the cliff, but maybe a survivalist or athlete would be able to climb the dangerous cliff and look for more specific treasures. Well, because Earl's a level 1 survivalist, we have a special option here, let's go ahead and take it. Earl goes for it and starts climbing the cliff with limited gear, a very daring endeavor. What kind of treasure is Earl looking for? You know, I honestly don't know what is available from this anymore. Once upon a time, I, uh, I knew a lot of the outcomes of these choices. Let's say a fossil? Looking for treasure here might be dangerous, but after a long search, Earl finally finds a real treasure worth taking home. So we've discovered a sunstone. So this gives 50 renown. Renown is victory points, basically. We don't really care about that. In addition, treasure gives insight. We can spend insight on the, uh, on the map at, in London to convert it into whatever resources we want. Basically, this is like wild resources. Make of it whatever you want to make of it. So, each treasure has a number of bonuses attached to it that you can select from. Uh, Earth treasures, Earth-themed treasures, have a pool to select from. And then, also, most treasures will have a set of unique bonuses. So probably there are like two or three unique things associated with this, and we get to see one of those. And then we get to see like two from the, I don't know, six or eight that are in the Earth pool. So every adventure, even if you're finding the same nodes in the same places and ending up with the same treasures, you're probably getting different mechanical benefit from those treasures. And that's going to affect the way you make decisions later in the game. So here we can take five study tokens right now, just get a bunch of research. We could improve the payout of all of the discovery tokens that we get for the rest of the game. This might be a good way to go, actually. Or we could have all of our scouts gain plus 10 speech. Scout is a type of character that we didn't actually bring any of. Yvonne's a speaker, Earl's a scientist, Wang Yu is a fighter, and we have no scouts. So we're definitely not taking this. I think I'm just going to take, again, the, the boost of early resources probably is right. That's going to end up being in the neighborhood of 25 research. I'm honestly not sure. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to take this. This is going to take a little bit longer to pay off, but it's going to pay off much, much larger. We'll, we will definitely get enough discovery tokens for this to be a much better long-term option. A fantastic find. You're going to be the envy of the renowned explorers with such a rarity. And such a discovery is sure to be appreciated. The crew turns its attention back to the big prize on the island, the Druidic Circle. So, words are color-coded in the text to imply that you're getting stuff. Uh, here we're going to get a discovery token right now, so that's nice. Get a little bit of payout from our sunstone right away. So, blue tokens give blue resource, green tokens give the green resource, yellow tokens give the yellow resource. In addition, there's two sizes of each token. So we have a lot of the small blue tokens, and we got one of the big blue token, which as you can see, first of all, gives a lot more research but secondly, also gives other stuff. And there's a big token for each of the colors. Hmm. So where are we going to go now? And then I guess I should say, the encounter tokens give you gold and status. And then in addition, because of use Captain Perk, we get a little bit of research from them. So we're about to run out of resources. Uh, because I've played a lot of this game, I know that the starting island always has a node on it that gives additional resources, or additional supplies. So that's what I'm looking for here, but unfortunately we have no idea which direction it's in. Let's go this way. This node looks empty, 
but one node on each island that appears to be empty will in fact give you a large token of your choice. Uh, it can be pretty valuable, obviously. Walking through unexplored countryside often yields small rewards. He was collecting some berries when he spots an unknown fern. Most people don't pay attention to plants, but the renowned explorers surely appreciate it when someone does. So okay, we found some cool plants. And now we're out of supplies. Yvonne's defenses are faltering. Oh no, the hunger pains! So, minus 20 to all defensive stats. That is a pretty huge penalty. Uh, we might want to just get out of here, go to the final node, but I happen to know that the first boss fight, the, the fight at the end of the first island, is pretty easy. And also, there are definitely things out here that we still want to find. So let's push onward. Another weird colorful stone. It looks as worthless as the other one, you remember, way back at the beginning. But the crew is starting to think there's something up with this stone. Well, let's, uh, let's have Earl investigate it, I guess. So let's talk about the rewards. You can see we get two study tokens for succeeding on this, plus an additional study token, which comes from the fact that Earl is a scientist. You can see Yvonne gets a bonus campaign token instead because she's a speaker, and you gets a bonus collect token instead because he's a fighter. In addition, you gets a bonus two encounter tokens every time he succeeds on the adventure wheel because of his captain perk. I don't think we're going to give him this roll though because the odds of it succeeding are so low. Actually though, you know what? Earl is already level two. This would get Wang Yu to level two. Yeah, let's let's go ahead and we'll take the we'll take the low chance with the high payout because I would like that level up. Oh, oh, nope. The adventure wheel does love to tease. Yu takes another hard look at the weird stone, but can't possibly find anything noteworthy about it. The crew accepts Yu's analysis and continues exploring. But he can't stop wondering about the stone, and is a little distracted, which is... a justification for the very abstract armor penalty. Alright, Earl's defenses are also faltering. It's dangerous. So Earl's a pretty good engineer, and we'll have him focus on being an engineer for a while. Uh, you know, af after taking this one, he's going to focus on being an engineer. So we'll have uh, we'll have you focus in the other direction here. He doesn't need to be an engineer; he can be a tactician. Okay, this is a node that I was looking for. Uh, there's something odd here. The crew finds ancient Celtic holy ground. A very interesting find, as there isn't much known about Celtic mythology yet. Something worth investigating. The site is very interesting. There are runes with rituals described to honor Sir Nunos, the Horned God. Those who fail to perform the ritual properly will be cursed with bad luck, the runes state. You learn a lot from observing, but Earl thinks you might learn even more by performing the ritual. Yeah, that seems like a good idea. This place is definitely not horrible and cursed. So, we could try to perform this ritual. You can see the uh, the right side of the selection things is tinged red to let us know that there's a serious penalty for failure here. If we fail this, we could lose a resolve. Resolve is basically like our lives counter. When we run out of resolve, we lose the game. Our adventure or our, uh, explorers will all get discouraged and go home. So we have to be careful with it. And you only start the game with two. Losing one here would be pretty dangerous. But... I happen to know that there's a pretty important thing that happens if we take this uh, if we take this check, even if we fail it. So I think we're going to go for it. It's just a matter of who goes. Yvonne has a pretty low chance to succeed. It would level her up, but I'm maybe not that... I'm not super jazzed about going after the 15%, especially given that her reward is relatively low. I kind of think we want to do it on you. So here's what's going to happen. Whether we fail or succeed on this, the person who tries it is going to gain the Archaeologist Legends perk. We kind of want to build up as many perks as possible on you because we want him to take the majority of our adventure wheel rolls so that he can get as many extra encounter tokens as possible. Because again, we're just trying to build up resources, right? So I'm going to take this on him even though he doesn't have a super good chance of succeeding on it because we really want the perk on him. And hey, maybe we'll get lucky. Well, what do you know? 
While performing the ritual, Yu suddenly has an idea on how the Celtic Pantheon was structured. With his newfound insight, he also gained a big interest in legends. Yu vows to read more on mythology, and gains the Archaeologist Legends perk. And then, supply problems, uh oh, okay, everybody's defenses are completely tanked. Ah, good. A node that gives supplies. Nice! You found a grove full of edible berries, vegetables, and clean water. This allows you to restock some of your supplies. So, no sense in not uh, pushing onward now that we have some. In the middle of the forest you find ruins of some sort. What it actually was remains to be uncovered. The crew starts an investigation, and Earl soon finds some ancient Celtic writing on a stone. It reads something like, Welcome to the other world, where we fairies live. We have been chased off our homeland by the Celts, and now live in this magical place. The crew is looking at the text with interest, when suddenly, a small person pops up. Ye, I am a fairy of old. Get off my land immediately, or I'll cast a spell on you. Earl can't believe it. A real fairy. Earl is terrified and excited at the same time. Also, not the sharpest knife in the drawer. It's, it's just a kid, Earl. It's the normal human kid. Earl blushes and acts as though he knew that all along. Still, pretty impressive that an orphaned kid is able to decipher this script. You offers the lonely kid the chance to join you as part of your entourage. The girl happily accepts. Yes, I can write stories and help you with reports. Finally, I'm going to see more of the world. Okay, so we've gotten our first entourage member. So, this, uh, this little girl who has chosen to wear a mustache and a reporter costume uh, will now give us bonus status from our encounter tokens. And because the tokens you get are in, they're converted to resources at the end of the expedition, these haven't actually been counted yet, so we will get this bonus on them. Alright, we have two supplies left. We could go here, we go down to one supply, get this encounter, then go here, be at zero supplies and take another penalty, and then leave. That would allow us to level Yvonne up before the boss fight. I... I'm a little nervous about how many penalties we've taken. There's definitely a limit. But also, XP is good. You know what, let's do it. We, we will bear one more hunger penalty. Just our luck, a pack of hungry wolves is following us. Only one way to get out of this. So sometimes, in combat-themed encounters, uh, the Tactician perk group will let you start the battle with a buff. It's a pretty small buff at one rank of Tactician. At three ranks of Tactician, it upgrades to be considerably better. And then at five ranks of Tactician, it gets even better and also lasts much longer. So that's one of the benefits of really focusing somebody into Tactician. Alright, this encounter wants us to resolve aggressively, and hey, we're pretty good at that. So I'm going to run you right over here into this, uh, this zone here. So let's... there we go. So these yellow zones on the ground give you extra spirit every turn. And spirit is the HP. So we will, uh, we will regenerate some spirit at the beginning of our next turn. You know, just in case we get, I don't know, bit on the face by a wolf. Seems like it could happen. That said, our party's pretty good at aggressive conflict. Yvonne maybe should have just yelled at that wolf. That honestly might have been a better play. Okay, so this will level Yvonne up. And we'll, uh, we'll have a more complicated encounter in a second here. We'll talk about the, the various parts of the combat system. Alright, so Yvonne gets her level up. Um, we're going to give her Rogue Mischief for the same reason that we gave Earl that Survivalist perk. I just want to kind of establish broad capabilities. And then, for leveling up, she got Deride, which makes the target enraged does more than 100% of her speech as damage, so it's pretty powerful, and it heals her for half of the damage inflicted. Alright, let's see how bad this is. The crew walks over some fallen trees in the forest when Earl slips and falls. Earl goes tumbling down before landing bottom first on a rotten trunk, breaking the trunk in two. Yvonne can't keep it in and bursts out laughing as Earl rolls on the ground in pain. It takes at least one full minute before Yvonne notices that the rotten trunk has some interesting mold samples. Yvonne mockingly thanks Earl for the rear search. Yes, that's very clever. We're all very impressed with you. 
So, use defenses are faltering even further. We are extremely not in good shape here. That's okay. You don't need defenses if you just defeat every enemy on the first turn. The Druidic Circle must be somewhere around here. Once we get there, this, this expedition will come to an end. So at the end of every expedition, there's a purple node like this that was revealed at the beginning, where we will do a sort of a boss encounter that's much more difficult, and then we will get some kind of large treasure. So the crew vigorously searches through the dense forests. It doesn't take long before you find it. A standing stone circle. The ruined main men here must contain valuable information to study. It will surely skyrocket your reputation at the renowned explorers. However, you hear a familiar laughter. Before you stands the French explorer Rivalou, who is considered to be the most promising of the renowned explorers, and he got here just before you did. Thank you, amateur. Under Rule 24B of the Explorer Mandate, fellow explorers should help each other out, and I really need to take this main man here to impress a lady. Well, okay, dude, but we also did a lot of hard wolf, hard work to get here. We had to fight wolves. You have to fight wolves? He looks amused. Oh, please, explorer. We both know this treasure is far better off in my hands. Allow my sharp companion, Amir Akhtar, to explain it to you in clearer words while I take the men here. Yet, yeah, hey, wait a minute. Don't touch that, though. We need that. Before you can stop Rivalu, his crew, uh, his crew scout, Amir, stops you. What's your problem, my friend? Goodness me, there's no need to yell. This dude, Amir, is kind of a jerk. Actually, he would fit in really well with our party. Alright, so, in this encounter, something bad will happen if we finish friendly. We'll get a reward if we finish devious, and something more neutral will happen if we finish aggressive. It shouldn't be too much of a problem for us to do this devious, but we're going to have to be careful. Because our party is extremely low on defenses, so uh, let's figure this out. He really brought his goon squad here. I think we should back up. If we go straight for him, we're going to have a problem where these guys come up from behind us and these guys all fall on us from the front and we're going to have to fight everybody on both sides at the same time. So let's start the encounter by falling back. Actually, hold on. Okay, Earl has 28 speech power. So let's have him run up. He might be able to... Yeah. He can take this guy out with a single taunt. Earl, you are a tremendously annoying person. This guy can't even participate in this conversation anymore. He's too upset. Alright, and then we can have Yvonne fall back and try to take this guy out. Alright, so we're building up some points of deviousness, basically. Yu has negative 31 speech defense, so he probably ought to get out of there. I should have had him be one of the attackers. That's fine. We'll just back him off, and then he's going to use his friendly ability to target one of our party members and just give him a little, little attitude boost. So, most speech abilities have an emotion associated with them. We've now made Yvonne confident, so she has 25% bonus attack power. Might come in handy here, we'll see. If we didn't do that, we were just going to have him move and then do nothing on his turn. It felt like I should have him do something. Okay, Amir Akhtar's really letting him have it and has made him sad. Yeah, unfortunately our speech defense is really, really tanked. I was kind of hoping that they would go after Yvonne, since she has a heal. Uh-oh. Okay, well they are going after Yvonne. Oh, but he missed. Yvonne has a... Yvonne has negative grit. In theory, he should not be able to miss. I guess his attack just has a less than 100% chance to hit. That's pretty unusual, actually. Alright, so we have this, these fireworks. Enemies that we hit with these will lose 25 speech defense. This might be important to us actually being able to uh, survive the turn. So we're going to have to, obviously, eliminate several enemies here. We also could just blow dudes up, but this little rock, paper, scissors thing. If the enemy's devious while we're aggressive, we're actually going to take a pretty large penalty. We want to be... We, you want to avoid being in the attitude that is inferior to your opponent's attitude. 
So it's probably not a good idea for us to go aggressive anymore. What we should do instead is, like I said, just try to remove some of these guys. Very impressive. That guy would never try to fight somebody who juggles that well. Alright, so we're going to... I think I'm going to nail Amir with an Impress. He's... Very, very vulnerable to, uh, to this, apparently. I mean, Yvonne just has really high speech. So Impress gives the target minus 25 speech defense. Actually, this guy can't can't reach us. So if I take this dude out, we'll actually we'll take fewer attacks. Our defenses are low enough that we need to be concerned about this. So we want to finish the battle devious, but we're gonna swap over to friendly friendly attitude here to take advantage of the fact that friendly beats devious. So, because we are now in the mood that is superior to our opponent's mood, we get a significant defense bonus. Hopefully enough to keep us from losing anybody here. Boy, Amir really doesn't like Wang Yu. And we, uh, yeah, we lost a resolve there. So when a party member gets reduced to zero health, or to zero spirit, you lose a point of resolve. That was real bad. Um, That's actually very bad. So both of our party members are sad now, reducing our speech power significantly. And we have to figure out a way of not losing here. Well, we can use Deride to take out one of these dudes and refill our health. I'm pretty sure that there's no sequence of moves that lets us actually take out Amir. He just has too much health left. We could blow up all of our enemies here. But if we do that, we're going to go into the next turn with a significant speech debuff. Because using an aggressive move while in the friendly attitude immediately swaps you to aggressive. And because we would be aggressive while they're devious, we would then take a big speech defense penalty. Which might allow Amir to defeat Yvonne. However, I'm going to go ahead and do this. So we're only going to take one attack this coming turn. And we're going to have Yvonne heal herself up with Deride. Now, there is a little bit of random randomness to the damage in this game, and what it shows you on the bar is the minimum damage that your attack could do. So there's a small chance that this will just defeat him straight up. Okay, so she's going to get healed significantly by that, and then if he can't take one of us out from basically full health, we will, uh, we will win the encounter. He's going for it. Okay, that is not sufficient. So we got a point of deviousness from using a devious ability on him. Uh, we'll get another point of deviousness here when we use this devious ability on him. Plus, you get a second point of the attitude for defeating an enemy with an attack of that attitude. So that'll swap us over to devious, and then we will be able to finish the encounter devious and get our reward. Now, Amir has a small amount of grit, so he can dodge attacks, but didn't happen this time. Alright, that got pretty close. This is what happens when you take a huge number of hunger penalties. Don't worry about the fact that we lost a resolve. It's not really that big of a deal. And I would have handled the, uh, I would have handled things a little bit differently if we had actually been at one resolve because of losing that, uh, that challenge earlier. Okay, so we got our two encounter tokens. And we're about to receive our reward. Amir's tone suddenly changes. Good job, my friend. You are sharp as a knife. Those who know how to hurt with words are truly mighty. I'd like to pay tribute to you with some research papers. Good luck, my friend. He leaves to follow Rivalu, who, of course, while we were fighting, managed to get away with the whole thing. But we got plus one speech for all of our party members for the entire rest of the game, which is a cool bonus. Certainly better than not getting a bonus. And uh, Rivalu is gone with the main men here. The most interesting and telling scriptures were on it. Suddenly, a hooded figure appears on the scene. A druid pops out of the forest. Amazing. I saw how you handled that encounter just now, defeating a foe with insults and manipulation. A remarkable skill. I'm honored that someone like you is looking for our history. It's kind of weird, but alright. Allow me to help with a divination. 
Please tell me, what is the dream you chase? Uh, so we have a, a choice here that can significantly alter our chances of getting treasure. Uh, I happen to know that we we want the Celtic Horned Helmet pretty badly. So we're going to tell him we want to be a, a wealthy and successful adventurer. Ah, wealth. I'm sure you'll spend it wisely. I'll divine the earth for valuables, but no guarantees. The druid does some chants and urges you to follow him. He suddenly stops and points at the ground. The crew starts to dig and finds a unique treasure surrounded by gold. So we get a little bit of uh, a little bit of collect tokens, a few collect tokens, so we'll get some money from that. And then, big fancy treasure for ending the adventure. We did get the one I was looking for. Cool. So the reason I wanted this one is that uh, Wang Yu can generate a lot of extra encounter tokens. And remember, from the campfire card that we played, we'll get some free encounter tokens at the end of every adventure. The Celtic Horned Helmet has, as its unique bonuses, extra resources from encounter tokens. So let's uh, let's take this one. This will combine with Wang Yu's uh, natural Captain Perk science thing to give us a lot of research from encounter tokens. And then we'll just basically spend all of our resources trying to increase the payout of encounters and improve our ways of getting them. Alright, with this last find, your expedition still concludes on a high note. However, it's clear that if you want to be the most renowned explorer, you'll have to beat Rivalu. Now it's personal. This time, it's personal. So that was the first of our five expeditions. We came away with it with a couple of treasures. We get four encounter tokens because there are two levels of rivalry in our crew. Both of our non-you crew members are angry at you. And honestly, I think this is a pretty okay haul of resources for the first adventure. So you can see, this is the renown threshold that you have to beat to actually win the game. Honestly, we probably will get there as long as I don't manage to die on the way. A magnificent job! The board of the Renowned Explorers International Society is impressed by your exploration skills in the Highlands. For this achievement, Chairman Pinkerton gives you an upgrade to your airship, which will allow you to carry more supplies. That's pretty cool. Obviously, we're going to skip the tutorial. So he gives us this proper Renowned Explorers membership. Uh, 50 Renown, an Insight, 30% off Il El Vigilante's brand canned dog food, and 2 Supply Capacity. So obviously, supply penalties are harsh, and the boss fights from now on will be much harder than that one was. So we can't really afford to take a huge number of hunger penalties uh, most of the time. So supply capacity is going to be something we care about a lot. Alright, so here we are at the world map. We're going to choose a new expedition to set out on in a moment. But first, we have all of these resources built up. So first of all, we have some insight. We got insight from our treasures. We can spend insight by studying in Berlin University, or lecturing in London, or campaigning in Paris to get tokens. And everybody gets different payouts, like Earl is better at getting research out of Insight because he's a scientist. Uh, Wang Yu can get encounter tokens from lecturing, which the other people can't do. But we're also allowed to store up to three Insight, which we probably will do. Because as the game goes on, we'll get things that improve the payout of our Insight. And we want to bank Insight for later so that we can get more resources out of it, in a lot of cases. So let's start spending our resources. We'll start with research. Spending research allows you to write research papers that are basically like the social policies from Civilization V, right? You have these little trees that you can spend your research in and you get cool stuff. Now we want to save some amount of research because after we unlock the after we finish the next expedition, the anthropology category will unlock. You can see it improves encounter tokens right when you unlock it, and then it gives you additional encounter tokens for solving encounters with a particular attitude, and it will also give us additional supplies. So this plays into the linear we're building around the encounter tokens. So we want to make sure we have enough, uh, enough research to complete this as soon as it opens up. But we definitely should spend some to start getting bonuses. So, let's see. When we unlock Observations, we'll get a Naturalist, Engineer, or Archaeologist perk on one of our crew members, and then we can get a Student who increases the payout of study tokens. 
We can get some extra study tokens from spending insight. We can get extra study tokens for succeeding on the adventure wheel. And remember, you is an archaeologist. So this, and we want him to be rolling the adventure wheel most of the time anyway. So this is something, uh, this is something that's actually pretty intriguing to me. And then just plus two supply capacity. Seems pretty good to me. Uh, exploration records will give us more supply capacity after every expedition. So it's pretty powerful, but if you really want to take advantage of it, you have to get it early. Here, very similar. You want to get this as early as possible. And it says the next one, the next research paper will cost 10. The cost rises pretty sharply as you research more. But I think we're going to start in observations. So, we should probably teach you perks, you know, because we want him to be rolling the wheel most of the time. So the question is, do we focus on archaeologists? Well, we'll teach it to you. Do we want to teach him another archaeologist perk and make him as good of an archaeologist as he can be? Or do we want to give him naturalists so that he has more varied capabilities? I think I'm going to go for an archaeologist perk. Because I know that there is a thing that is uh, eventually going to be available to us. Just some foreknowledge I have that will require us to have a high-level archaeologist. We can we can put a little work in and make make you a high-level archaeologist. So, we get to pick any of the archaeologist perks. Uh, let's go for... I'm going to pick Symbolism, because I don't think Symbolism is one that we can get from many other places. Excavation, Occult, and History are all perks I know we could learn in other ways. I think architecture as well, but symbolism. Yeah, I don't. I don't know if there's a way to gain either of these. Any other way to gain either of these? Let's go. Yeah, let's go for this one. Okay. So you've got a new perk. He's an even better archaeologist. And let's grab a student plus two insight. So we're only allowed to bank three. We'll have to spend two of this. We'll get some extra study from spending the insight that we're about to have to spend. Extra study tokens when succeeding on the adventure wheel with Earl and uh, Earl and you. And then, of course, we want to take the supply capacity. Now I think maybe we want to stop spending, though. This gives plus one study token whenever you enter a challenge note of your choice for the first time. This could be valuable. And then when we complete all of the research papers in one project, we get some kind of renown bonus. I think it's always a renown bonus. Yeah. In the normal game, this is a big deal. For us, not so much. So I wonder if we even want this. You know, it probably ends up being a fair amount of extra study tokens. It costs 60 research. We would have to get only about 10 to 12 tokens for this to be a net gain in science over the course of the whole game. You know what? Maybe we should go ahead and get it. Yeah, let's get it. So what are we particularly well suited to? Tactician, Archaeology. So Tactician is good for Wits challenges. Archaeology is good for Cultural challenges. Nature is Athlete, Survivalist, Naturalists. We're not particularly good at that, and we probably won't, will never be particularly good at that. We're good at Wits challenges, though. Maybe we should... Uh... Yeah, let's take let's take a bonus on wits challenges, and we'll steer ourselves into wits challenges. And we get a project mastery bonus, plus renown from something. We're gonna get a lot of research. Let's take it from research. But like I said, it doesn't matter a tremendous amount. So next is status. So we can use our status to attract more helpers, who will give us a little bit of bonus payout from our tokens, or specialists who tend to give you extra opportunities to earn tokens instead so we can uh, we can spend status to upgrade the shop to uh, unlock new tiers of guys and additional helpers so we can learn some uh, we can learn some perks and get extra tokens whenever succeeding on the adventure wheel with people who have certain perk classes built up and you can see all the guys who are, all the specialists available at the different tiers of this place are basically the same kind of thing. Ah, there's another way to get architecture. And then the final tier of specialists are usually pretty special. 
So like these guys will double the tokens you get from spending your insight. That's uh, pretty good. It's pretty powerful. What's the other shop got in it? Extra tokens for resolving encounters in certain moods. That's interesting. Well... Ooh, extra big tokens for evolving, resolving encounters in specific moods. What mood is important to us? Do we have anything that... Extra study for resolving aggressive, and we are pretty good at resolving aggressive. Extra attack while we're aggressive. Okay, aggressive seems like a winner, maybe? Extra campaign tokens when resolving devious. But... We probably want to take this at this level anyway, because this makes her sudden attack hit twice, and it's very, very powerful. So I think this is a good aggressive party. Let's go ahead and buy some guys to feed into us being aggressive. Like the Ambassador. Uh, there's not really much sense in spending status to upgrade, since we have so little status. We wouldn't be able to afford another specialist anyway. So let's just get a helper with our remaining status. So a student who would help us gain research from study is out of the question. We can get extra payout from our yellow tokens, extra payout from our green tokens, or extra payout from encounters. We're going to go pretty hard on the encounters, so why don't we pick up a trader? And as you can see, as you hire, as you have people in your entourage, that particular class of helper gets more expensive, which is why the journalist here was so much more expensive than the trader. Okay, we have to spend our insight, but I wanted to I wanted to get our helpers in place first so that we get the maximum payout from our tokens, because insight is going to give us some extra tokens. And I think what we do here is probably just spend two insight via Earl, and this will all be science or research that we can bank toward getting the archaeology tree finished quickly. Okay. Pretty good. So we're at 120. That's enough to open up uh, open up the anthropology thing next after the next expedition. And hopefully, what, what I'm really hoping to do is get to trade or plunder quickly. Because, obviously, anything that gives you extra supplies is very powerful. Alright, I think it is now time to spend our gold. So we have 324 gold. And the shop, we can only buy some very basic stuff. We can spend some money to upgrade the shop to unlock more of these items for sale. So we can get basic attack items to improve our attack stats. Get some armor to improve our defenses. There's grit armor as well. But only scouts can wear it, and we don't have any scouts. Speaker, scientist, fighter. And then there are trinkets that give you various perks. So, hmm, let's figure out where we're going to go, and then we'll know what perks are valuable. So the three two-star expeditions we have available are a Hungarian fort, the Mali Mystery, and the Caribbean Island. So here, the once fierce Dutch pirate Roche disappeared many years ago after burying his pirate treasure. Monkeys and smugglers will oppose you, and an aggressive approach would make it easier. There's also a lot to study for research here. We would be pretty good at this island, actually. We could go to Mali. You're up for a unique chance to explore the inland in search for a mysterious witch doctor. These areas are full of good-spirited villagers and devious hyenas, and a friendly approach might help. So we, uh, we do have Rogue and Beguiler perks. We could get Athlete. There's a, an item that'll give you an Athlete perk. We could find a lot of gold, but... We're not particularly good at being friendly. Right, so Ivan has three attacks, all of which scale with 100% of her relevant stat and have a 100% hit chance, but the other two people in the party have very weak friendly attacks. Poor scaling, low hit, or lower than 100% hit chance. Um, that makes it very difficult for us to be friendly in any kind of sustained fashion, so Molly Mystery might be a little too tough for us. And we could go to the Hungarian fort. Lady Vaduva, the treasurer of the renowned explorers, has notified you of a forgotten fort. It used to be a secret alchemy lab in the Middle Ages. 
There must be something amazing to discover around these forgotten places. Being devious might help. And you can expect tactician and archaeologist uh, challenges, which we're good at, and then quick thinker and diplomat, which we're not. And then this, this adventure tends to give a lot of status. The Hungarian fort is actually quite good, but I think we're going to go Caribbean Island on this one. We have an aggressive party. We're okay at nature and technique challenges. And we're kind of keying in on research here. I think going research heavy is important. So, with nature challenges on the mind, let's have a look at what is available for us to purchase here in the Red Square Market. We already have Survivalist Navigation, which is the perk that this, uh, this compass gives. We can upgrade the shop and purchase ourselves a machete. Let's put a machete on you. So now he has a level of athlete. It also boosts terrifying abilities, which he doesn't have any of yet. But at the next level up, he will learn one. A terrifying explosion. So this will give him a little bit of bonus on that. But mostly I'm buying it because it's a cheap way to get a point of athlete, which is important for nature challenges. And then we have 174 money left. So we've started with some pretty crummy gear. One point of armor is almost not, a, like, almost meaningless. So let's replace some of our defensive stuff. Yu has the highest spirit in the party, and he also has an ability that uh, tends to draw attention from enemies. And he's going to be the guy rolling the uh, adventure wheel in a lot of cases. So I think what we want to do is buff up his defensive stats. His lowest is speech defense, so let's sell his terrible leather vest and buy him a thing that gives him a lot of speech defense. Alright, and then we have 31 money left. We can make a little bit of money by selling the bad gear we start with. So, let's try to get an offensive item in here for somebody. Yvonne's a little bit on the weak side. Her highest attack thing is 29, and she only actually has a 22 power behind her physical attacks. So why don't we pick her up an offensive item? We'll, uh, we'll sell off some of these very basic, very poor items and grab her a book. So we'll increase her higher offense up to around the level that everybody else's higher offense is at. And then, what do we have left? We have 7, 14, 29 more money worth of stuff we could sell. There's nothing available for 30 gold, so we may as well just keep the one point of stats that these things are giving us. Okay, I think we're ready to go. So we're up to 12 supplies now, which will be very helpful. Now let's, uh, let's head out to this Caribbean island. The fierce Dutch pirate Roche has lost treasure. I do love treasure. And that's basically the loop of the game. You do an expedition, you get cool stuff, you use that stuff to increase your ability to get cool stuff from the next expedition, and then somewhere around the mid-game you start focusing on really turning all of those resources into uh, renown. So, the crew sets foot on the beautiful island and looks around. Just when Yvonne finds some man-made debris and realizes this island is not as uninhabited as you first thought, you've got company. Smugglers! They come rushing toward you. Our secret island has been discovered. We've got to silence them, mates. It seems they leave you no choice. They're coming right for us, right? Listen, we do in fact have a choice. We could befriend the smugglers. We're not going to, because we get an extra token if we shoot them. But we could. So we got some dudes with knives here. Particularly weak to enrage attacks. No armor to speak of. And then this lady over here has a gun. She has higher attack power than the other two do, so let's deal with her first. And it looks like it's just these three. Should be easy enough. See, guns are dangerous. You shouldn't play with those. She's fine. Don't worry about it. You know what else is dangerous? Whipping dynamite at strangers for no reason. So, we're going to hit these guys with the uh, with the fireworks to startle them and lower their attack power for two turns. And then uh, we can work them over here. 
I'm just going to sadden one of them out. A single devious attack isn't enough to tick us over from devious to aggressive, unless it defeats at least two people at the same time. So we can stay, uh, we can stay aggressive here. Keep generating aggressive points for the, uh, so that we make sure that we get our aggressive reward. All right, you, I think you've got this under control. I feel less bad about it because they're smugglers and not like the natives of this place, but it is kind of screwed up to just go somewhere and start hurling dynamite at everyone you see. So we got our two encounter tokens, giving us a lot of good resources, plus the research token for finishing aggressive, plus we have, uh, we have started to be known as an aggressive expedition. With the smugglers out of the way, your crew has enough time to hide the boat and start exploring the island. Sadly, it seems this island is a smuggler's hideout. You better be careful. Ready to go, you leads the crew into adventure. So our uh, our target node is a little further away than it was on the first expedition. But we've got more supplies, and there are a few ways to gain additional supplies, usually, on an expedition. So I'm not too worried. We'll get across the island just fine. The ruins of a village. The crew is curious about the details of its history, but you is cautious. Ooh. If we failed this roll, we'd lose two supplies, but the odds of succeeding are pretty good, and the reward for doing so is very significant. Alright, you know what you must do, man. Uh-oh, uh, okay, that's gonna stop. I was a little worried at the speed it was going, it was gonna get over to that skull. You carefully leads the investigation to a success. From local writings, you concludes that the village was struck by a disaster that ruined their food. You takes an urn for investigation. And for boasting, let's be honest. Another mystery solved. That's pretty good for being one node into the adventure. Alright, so here we have a trader. Traders often will allow you to exchange money for items. So it is sometimes a good idea to leave some money in the pool instead of spending it all in London. But what they almost always also let you do is spend resolve uh, to acquire supplies. It's flavored as you trading medical supplies for food. Um can be very important. I'm not honestly sure that we'll do it here. Because, first of all, the trader is unfortunately way too close to the beginning of the adventure, and secondly, at only three resolve, I'm a little nervous still. Let's, uh, let's go over here, though. See what's what. What an enormous tree! Climbing it might reveal information about this island, but you'll need to be quite the athlete. Well, it turns out, we have one of those. So this is really what we wanted, right? We wanted to be having you roll as many of these as possible so that we can keep getting the two encounter tokens that we get every time he's successful at one. In addition to the fact that our encounter tokens are really paying out. That said, we also need to do combat whenever possible because we do need to get XP. So let's go ahead and take this. You hear gunshots in the vicinity. You follow the sound and see a smuggler showing off at, or, yeah, showing off at target shooting in front of two other smugglers. A bullet ricochets off a tree and hits Earl, who cries out of shock. The smugglers immediately turn toward you. Well, that was maybe not the stealthiest thing we've ever done. I mean, in a certain sense, I'm impressed with Earl. Because he j dude just got shot, and all he did was yelp a little bit. Okay, these guys are very far away. I don't really want to go over there. So I'm going to give them a turn to come to us. Right, because we could run forward, but all we'll do is bring ourselves into range so that they move forward and hit us first. I don't care for that. So, how far do they move? Yeah, this guy will run up and get right in our face. She can't get close enough to attack. I think her attack is range 2, just like our gun attack is. So yeah, we'll let these guys run toward us. Smugglers are pretty basic enemies. Stronger than monkeys. It's good to know. It's good to know that a smuggler is generally stronger than a monkey. So let's target a friendly with our encourage thing to give them plus attack. I think we'll do it to Earl. Earl's attack is higher than Yvonne's to start with, but remember, Earl has this AoE thing. So let's get ourselves in a position to get the most powerful explosion we can generate. Alright. So a lot of abilities that have cooldowns do this thing that it says at the bottom here. Gains power each turn while it's off cooldown. So you don't always want to just cycle your abilities on cooldown. Sometimes it's wise to save them up for a little bit. So we gained a little bit of power by not blowing that right away. 
Okay, and like I said, damage is slightly random, and the bar shows you the minimum amount of damage you can deal. So I'm going to do this in the hopes that Earl exceeds the minimum damage very slightly and defeats that gun smuggler. He did not. He, he got minimum. Okay. That's a shame. Uh, we can get her. We probably should. So Yvonne can only make it to here. And I think I'm just going to have her devious this, uh, this smuggler out. Yvonne's attack is melee range, so she's not really able to contribute to this battle in that way. She's honestly, even though we're focusing on aggression, she's probably going to do a lot of devious stuff, especially when the enemy is also aggressive, because the double aggressive mood gives a bonus to the attack power of devious abilities. Alright, let's make sure we get you out of there before you have the chance to shoot one of us in the face. Which we would survive, of course because Renowned Explorers is not that kind of game. But still, it's unpleasant. Nobody wants to be shot in the face. Oof. Earl's armor is not good. Yeah, I should be more careful about putting Earl in front. He has actual zero armor. There we go. He exceeded the, min the minimum damage there. All right, good stuff. We're racking, uh, racking up the tokens already. I think we are on a good, good path here. They sure won't be using Explorers for target practice again anytime soon, or actually in the past. They definitely did not shoot us on purpose. That was kind of our fault. With his head bowed down, Yu asks for the crew's attention. He wants to apologize for being mean about the Explorers at the Society. You see, he's just a big fan of the best Explorers, and gets a bit carried away when his favorite gets compared with other Explorers. Uh, okay. They have the same reaction to this. It's okay, Yvonne says. I already forgot about it. Yu is happy that his rude remarks haven't had a lasting effect. Crew continues their expedition. But who is Yu's favorite explorer? Yvonne thinks it might be Pinkerton or Bobo. These are all characters you can meet in the actual game. Alright, Yu got another level up, so... He can gain an extra 10 spirit, but his spirit's actually in a really good place already. Or we can get an extra study token whenever we resolve an encounter aggressively. Well, I think I know which one I'm taking. And now he has this big boom ability. So it hits one target, it does a fair amount of damage, it terrifies them, which lowers their attack, and he receives bonus uh, bonus damage on it from his terrifying booster here. And it also stuns them if they're not a boss. This could be very valuable. Alright, so the, the way the trader works exactly is you can trade one resolve for four supplies. If we went there, we'd be at eight supplies, we could completely fill back up. But, obviously, if we do that, we're putting ourselves in a position where it doesn't take a whole lot of things going wrong to wipe us out. But, it's so important to get resources early. You know what? I think I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this so that we can just go to some extra nodes. So, you spots a small hut where both supplies and items are being sold. Let's, let's trade them some medical supplies for some food. And then we can look at their equipment on sale, but we don't have any money, really. So, they're selling some stuff for 50 gold each. Yeah. That's fine. Thank you. Thank you for your food. Okay. Oh, for some reason I was thinking uh, Wits Challenge included one of our other categories. Whatever, we're fine. So we have Tactician, we have Beguiler, because Yvonne's quite a good Beguiler. And Wits was the category that we chose for our Science Boost. So we do want to do this, but I think I'm going to go here and reveal a couple more nodes first. Ooh. The crew finds the perfect material to improve some gear for this expedition. Or you could just study the materials for later. You wonders what the best course of action would be. Well... Alright, nobody's level up is on the line here. We could go for this improvement for you. But Earl's so close to guaranteed to get the bonus. Maybe we should just go for him? He's also not that far off of a level up. And I saw that we are now next to a node where I'm going to want people to be leveled up before we go into it. Right? Because he gets, yeah, he gets bonus attack once he levels up. Or we could reduce the cost of upgrading item shops, because Earl knows a guy. That's pretty weak, I think. We're definitely going for, for this one. So yeah, let's... 
a 40% difference in success chance, plus the fact that I really want Earl to get his level up before we hit that node, I think means we're going to go this way. Success! With some ingenuity, Earl creates a gear improvement that will improve attack and armor, but only for this expedition. Well, Yvonne's armor is quite good. There's diminishing returns on um, defensive stats as well, so the few points up from zero are actually the most valuable points. So I think we're going to go ahead and give this to Earl. Five armor is pretty good for him. So this, the skull, means that there might be an epic encounter here. We do want to do this, absolutely, but I'd really like it if we could get Earl four more XP before we do. So let's wander around the area, see if we can come back in a minute here. A group of locals. If you're able to impress these people, they might shower you with gifts and respect. They seem like they might be a little gullible to a roguish lie. You ponders on who will lead the talk. So, we could throw out uh, this, this attempt with Yvonne, because she's got a lot of beguiler, and she's a speaker, and she has huge speech power. She can also just tell a lie because she's a rogue, but uh, her speech is such that that'll be more valuable. This is a good option if you like didn't bring a speaker, but you have a rogue, and uh, a lot of scouts are rogues. So you can kind of kind of slide into this with a decent chance of getting it done, because as you can see, most people are uh, not so good at this check. Let's go ahead and roll it with Yvonne. We could, we could roll it with Earl. Uh, we're adjacent to a an encounter right now. So we could roll this with Earl, despite the fact that it's very likely to have no benefit, just to make sure Earl gets to his level up. But I think, let's let's go for the actual tokens. We'll just find another thing to give Earl XP. We'll be okay. I do want these tokens. Wow, Yvonne's charms are too much to handle for the locals. They all want to get close to Yvonne and get an autograph on a piece of wood. The crew gains gifts and praise from the impressed locals. And we can camp now. I suppose we should. I don't think there's any reason to wait. So let's see what the cards give us today. Uh, we could gain one secret for each two journalists in our entourage. Unfortunately, that is currently zero secrets. We could just gain two resolve. It's something we might want to do eventually. Choose a level four survivalist who will get plus supplies on survivalist spins. That's a powerful card, but the odds that any of us will ever get to level four survivalist are basically zero. Let's just take, uh, let's take Yvonne's story. Journalists interview Yvonne and one crew member evaluates her responses. Sure, let's go for it. Yvonne's fame follows her everywhere. Even here in Suasa Island, some journalists still tirelessly try to get an interview. This one has been admirably tenacious, and Yvonne decides to give an interview while the crew rests. Alright, let's go. The journalist is grateful and bombards Yvonne with questions about her life in the Canadian Special Forces, her acting career, and of course, about the crew. What is it like to work with common explorers? What are the dynamics in the crew? Well, we have used crew story active, so each level of rivalry is valuable to us. So, uh, I think we're going to pick the top option here. These assistants don't pay too much attention to them. I see. You, must, you probably must save them from trouble with your charms or spot-on insults all the time. I love the fact that the thing she's most famous for is just being a huge jerk to everybody. <laughs> At least you don't have to carry all that loot you gather by yourself. Thanks for having me. As the interview wraps up, one crew member is particularly insulted by Yvonne's remark. Well, Earl doesn't list dislike Yvonne yet, so we can uh, we can generate a new rivalry there. Those are some harsh words. Il Earl feels a rivalry growing. <clears throat> In the meantime, Yvonne convinces another journalist to follow you more closely. All that jibe isn't for nothing, but the tension rises. So we got another journalist out of that. We got some uh, renown. And... Now we have another rivalry growing. Plus five attack power. <laughs> Earl's really on edge. He doesn't like anybody that he's traveling with. So yeah, two journalists. Pretty good. And we'll get 25 extra renown every time we recruit a journalist, which is, like I said, pretty unimportant. So we only have this many cards remaining in our deck. When the deck runs out, it'll get all the discards will get reshuffled. So we'll see some of these cards a second time, which is good, because there's some of them that I would like to play. I just didn't want to play them uh, yet. All right, let's go get some XP. You hear rustling in, the, in some of the trees. You immediately think of monkeys, but all of a sudden two smugglers carrying bananas come descending down. One tells the other, we're sure to get an extra portion of coconuts if we deliver these to the boss. You became agitated. 
Since only being worth an extra portion of coconuts isn't flattering at all. Oh, he's talking about us. This them is us, not the bananas. I was kind of like, if you already have bananas, what do you need coconuts for? But no, they're going to try to they're going to try to capture us and trade us for coconuts. And I agree, that's not flattering. All right. Well, this is looking pretty familiar. So, we might want to take this a little bit differently because we're uh because we're a little more outmatched here. We might want to be a little smarter about this. I'm going to have Earl fall back and attack this smuggler. But basically because I want Earl far away from the rest of the combat, because his armor is garbage. It's a little bit less garbage now than it used to be, but it's still pretty bad. So we'll start up aggressive. These are all weak to enrage. So we'll have you run over here. You has good defenses. We'll just put him right in the middle. And then I'm going to hit... Yeah, I'm going to hit you with an enrage. Powerful enough to take this guy down. And then... We get two pips of devious from that. Now let me make sure of something. Okay, she will not defeat anybody with a... Uh, with a devious attack. So I want to generate one more point of deviousness here. With a devious attack. To push us over into being devious. So that we get the extra grit during their turn. But I want to make sure that they are they have enough health left between the lot of them so that we can switch back to aggressive on our turn, which will take uh, us generating three pips. Because obviously we want to finish the encounter aggressive for the extra rewards here. But that kind of thing is going to be really important to do as the game continues to get more difficult as we move on in the uh, expeditions. Manipulating the moods matters a lot. So this will swap us back over to aggressive now that the danger is largely past. And is Earl going to be actually... Is he going to be able to get close enough to hit her? Yeah, he's good. Alright. In my defense, this time they started it. They straight up said out loud that they were planning to capture me. Our apologies, worthy explorers. Here, take our bananas as an apology. Apparently those are some valuable bananas. Ooh, hey look, a treasure. Let's go get a treasure. You find a huge tree that towers above the canopy of the deep jungle. One crew member could go climb the tree and see what's up there. Many things can be found in jungle canopies. But you can expect physical challenges, biological data, or hidden bounties. Well, um... I'm pretty sure there's no rolling associated with this event. Being a survivalist gets you one thing, being an athlete gets you another. It would be best if we had gathered up enough perks on one person to get all of the things here, but I think we'll just have you climb the tree. I don't think it matters. I think the, uh, the thing you get for being a, an athlete and the thing you get for being a survivalist are roughly equivalent in value, if I remember correctly. Yeah, let's have Earl go up there. Okay, so Earl climbs the tree for over 30 minutes until the canopy is finally reached. The view of the jungle is simply breathtaking. There are things to explore, though. What will he do? Well, first he'll study the canopy. It's a very biodiverse place. Earl takes time to document the wonderful things seen here. This will surely be useful for later studies. And then, because we're a survivalist, we get to scout out some unusual stuff. In a place covered with mold, Earl finds tropical fungi. These are well-received delicacies in the Explorer Society. Oh, I thought I remembered there being a, a small treasure that you got for being a survivalist. Okay, so we'll climb back down the tree. That was okay. So if we go here, we're guaranteed to get 2 XP for Earl. And then we can work our way back up to this thing, and then from here back around to the exit. A group of monkeys led by a blue monkey is bullying another barrel. They look really scared. Oh, we gotta defend them. Sadly for you, the blue monkey notices you and tries to assert his dominance over you as well. That's a, that's a scientific thing, by the way. A group of monkeys is called a barrel. So, we can set a friendly example for the monkeys, which might not be the best in this jungle. Or we can set a better example. Let's, uh, let's teach these monkeys a thing or two about, I guess, shooting each other? I'm not really sure what they're going to be able to gain from our example. Now notice, these guys are devious right now. 
We want to finish the encounter aggressive, but we don't want to be aggressive the whole way through, because if we're aggressive while they're devious, we'll take penalties. So, what is the best way to start this off? These guys aren't particularly weak to anything. They don't have a lot of spirit, though. They're going to try to just outnumber us and wear us down. Okay, you doesn't have the... the speech power necessary to take down one of these monkeys by himself, unfortunately. What he could do is hit him with the fireworks. And then, because they're, they'll be um, speech defense debuffed, then we could surely take out these two. But I'm worried about the other monkeys collapsing in on us from both sides. We should try not to take four attacks if we can get away with it. So maybe this is a good time to use the big boom. We'll just kind of take this guy out of the out of the fight for this turn. And then Yvonne's speech power is such that she can probably defeat one by herself, especially if she goes friendly while friendly abilities are buffed. Let's have her back up to here. And then, yeah, take this monkey out. And if we end the turn friendly, we'll actually get a uh, significant defense buff. And since we can't take a monkey out with Earl anyway. I mean, we could take him out by being aggressive. Yeah, let's do that. We don't need the defense buff, because we're actually not going to take very many attacks here. So, we're generating some pips of the other attitudes. The next thing we do is pretty likely to tip us over into a different attitude. But that's fine. I think we're, we're in a good spot here. Alright, so this enrage reduces armor. It's not a big deal. I think I'm going to have you finish this guy off with a devious attack. That's going to pull a pip off of one of the other bars. When you, when you finish off an enemy with the attitude you already are, it lowers the levels of the other things. What do I want to do here? If we, swat, if we switch over to friendly right now, which we could do by doing this, right? Then we are putting ourselves in a position where it's very easy to swap to aggressive. Because when you're being friendly, any aggressive action switches you over to the aggressive attitude. You can't really remain friendly while shooting at people, it turns out. Now, Earl has a ton of speech defense, so he can probably move forward and get something done here. But, um, what we're going to want to do is swap to aggressive at the beginning of next turn so that we can build up enough aggression to... Hmm. Actually, he really can't do much of value. We could try to impress this monkey, but the, the non-blue monkeys are so weak that they go down in one hit to pretty much everything. And he's not fast enough to get over to affect the blue monkey with anything. And he can't target himself with his try to impress. Otherwise, I would just have him heal himself a little. Alright, I guess let's just... Yeah, there's no version of this where he gets to take this guy down, unfortunately. Let's just put some damage on this guy, I suppose. And Earl can, I'm sure, endure two attacks from these guys. With his 55 speech defense. Actually, maybe not. That... That hit remarkably hard through 55 speech defense. Okay. They split their attacks up. That was nice of them. I could have been bad otherwise. Alright, can you get close enough to get them both with the fireworks? He can. Surprise, we're actually aggressive. And we're pretty good at it. I think Yvonne ought to be able to finish this guy off. Yeah. That one actually got a little closer to us losing resolve than I'm comfortable with, considering it was a group of random enemies. Yeah, not, not even like a difficult encounter. The bullied monkeys are delighted you punched out that blue monkey's barrel. 
They start copying your behavior and start practicing claw attacks and bites. That's true, we do often bite during combat. These guys will hold themselves pretty well in the jungle. Well, I'm glad we could help, I guess? So, like I said, this I don't think is very good. We're going to take plus six attack as long as we're aggressive. And so Earl has unlocked a second trinket slot. Um, not super relevant right this second, but it will be eventually. How far is Yvonne from a level? Two XP. Okay. So if we go this way, we'll go to six, then five, then four... We might be hard-pressed to get back, but I'm just thinking that this being a technique challenge might give Yvonne the opportunity to roll some dice and get her level up before we hit the, the enemy. How significant is that? Uh, it will learn her the group insult ability, which, okay, is a target cone thing that lowers the enemy's speech and attack. That's pretty powerful. And it will give her uh, extra damage on her set. Maybe it's not that important for her. No, let's let's just go straight for it. We'll try to preserve some supplies to explore with a little bit. What an amazing find! In the deep of the jungle, you find the elusive hundred-year fruit. The low-hanging fruit takes more than a hundred years to grow to this size. Surrounding this fruit is a barrel of monkeys performing a ritual never witnessed before. You could just take the fruit to safety, and it's a treasure. A naturalist might be interested in studying the monkey's ritual. We don't have a naturalist, but Earl's enough of a scientist that he could at least gain something from it. However, I'm pretty sure that if we try the ritual, or if we try to study this and fail, we don't get the treasure. Now, it's not a great treasure, but every treasure is going to give us some insight, which we could, of course, turn into tokens. Hmm. I think I'm going to roll the dice on this one. We'll go at it with Earl. Because I would like to get, you know, the study tokens and the treasure. Okay, looks good. Fascinating. Earl observes that the monkeys know about the fruit, suggesting cultural memory in this barrel. It's true, most monkeys are not 100 years old. Once the monkeys start shaking the tree, making squishing noises and explosive gestures, Earl starts to get anxious and rushes in and takes the fruit. The monkeys are seemingly disappointed. With the research and fruit in hand, you leave the heartbroken monkeys behind. Okay, pretty good. So we could get a treasure hunt token, which is a significant amount of gold and also some status. Or we could take three collect tokens and three study tokens. So this is going to be, you know, 30 to 40 gold on average. Whereas the treasure hunt token is, I think, 50 to 75 gold plus a considerable amount of status. I don't think we need study so badly that we should ignore this. This is a better result. Alright, I feel pretty good about that. Okay, let's go do this thing. As you walk through the jungle, you spot a big shadow jump away further into the woods. It looks big and intimidating. That big shadow will surely make for an epic and risky encounter. This is a fairly tough encounter, however the reward is fantastic. So let's take the risk and follow the shadow. You start the hunt, and soon you find out what the shadow was. A Titan Ape. What a magnificent and rare creature with a really good mohawk. The crew disrupts his meal, and he's not pleased about it. He quickly leaps toward you to deal the first blow, but you stalwartly parries, and the encounter starts. So, um, as far as I know, that stalwartly parries thing only happens if you have a person in your party who's an athlete. If nobody in the party is an athlete, then the monkey just deals some damage to you. You start the encounter damaged. So, we can subdue the Titan Ape or befriend him. Unfortunately, as much as I would like to, this party's just not any good at this kind of stuff. So, yeah, let's, uh, let's fight this Titan Ape. The good news is, these monkeys are not particularly tough. The bad news is, there's a lot of them. And this is the first boss encounter... Okay, so these are all the monkeys on the map right now. This is the first boss encounter to function the way most of them will for the rest of the game, uh, which is to say that there will be an infinite number of monkeys. So how do I want to do this? I think I want to throw the fireworks. So enemies will keep spawning from the edges of the map, and we're going to have to race to defeat the Titan Ape before they overwhelm us. If we start off with fireworks, we'll go aggressive, and then we'll have some bonuses to our devious power. 
That's probably the right way to go. And then we tried to have we have Yvonne and Earl both go devious so that we end devious with the grit bonus. Oh, but wait, we should read this. This ape will dominate you if he senses you're devious. That's right. I just remembered. The Titan Ape gets a massive bonus if you end the turn devious. So we actually probably want to be pretty careful about this. How about we start by going devious. The thing is, I really, I would love it if he was enraged before we hit him. Because obviously, enrage uh, reduces armor. If we can get him down to zero armor before we start hitting him, that would be cool. We might want to keep Deride available. It has a pretty long cooldown, and we might need to heal. I'm just gonna... You know, we're just gonna go for it. Because... Unfortunately, Yvonne doesn't have a way of lowering people's armor that doesn't have a super long cooldown. And I really want both Earl and you to throw out their AoE abilities, because we can defeat two of these monkeys and get the third one low enough for Yvonne to take it out. Hmm. For some reason it won't... it won't launch. I'm clicking. You gotta, you gotta be careful about it. There we go. Make sure we hit all of the enemies. Alright. So now on this coming turn... We can have somebody enrage him, and then we can really focus a lot of damage on him very quickly. Ah, except he has uh, he has beaten his chest, improving his defenses for one turn, and he also made himself confident. So his attack power is up, so that's pretty bad for us. We need to do enough negative emotion to him here to get him out of being confident so that we can get him properly enraged. So why don't we start with a Sadden. This will pull his little emotion meter down. Uh, he can't be enraged as long as he's in the green. Ah, oh, this won't quite get him there. What if I attack him first? Yeah. Alright. Let's throw an attack out here. Because first of all, we only need to adjust his uh, mood down by a little bit for this to make him enraged. And uh, secondly, the attack, Earl's attack deals a lot more damage than his speech does. And we also wanted to clear a point off of the devious thing because we don't want to end up actually devious here. We want to give ourselves a lot of room to work with. Okay. He didn't hit her very hard. That's not even that bad. I was going to say, if he hits her hard, we can just have her deride him and gain a lot of her health back. But now that he's enraged, I think it is time to focus on him with physical attacks. So Earl's got a ton of attack power now. Yeah, that's pretty good. We could deride this guy. But he can't... I don't think he can hit us hard enough to, uh... To take us down from this much health. So let's just focus physical attacks. We'll keep deride in case he hits her again. But honestly, I think we're going to just run this battle out before his reinforcements can even get over to us. We have very high attack power as a party. And also, use armor is fantastic. It's very, very high. So we're going to have to do this kind of thing a lot where we protect Earl from getting hit. But in return, he is going to very easily defeat any enemy that doesn't have a ton of armor. So the Titan Ape is subdued. We get our tokens, we get our buff. The Titan Ape is broken and defeated. You capture the ape with relative ease now that it's unable to defend itself properly. This ape will be the central attraction in zoos and circuses all over the world. Like I said, we're kind of the bad guys in this story. Again, you can play parties that approach things in different ways. You could befriend the Titan Ape and get... He'll give you a, a cool banana, you know? I feel bad about this, I do. Well, it's hard for me to imagine that getting an extra encounter whenever we resolve an encounter token aggressive is the wrong, wrong call. I think this basically has to be right. This fits so well into the linear that we're building. 
And there's Yvonne's level. Uh, an extra campaign when resolving Devious obviously is not very valuable. And this is just even more damage. So she's picked up her Cone Enrage attack. This is very, very useful. It doesn't, uh, it doesn't do a lot of damage, but it's a really good way to distribute a lot of Enrage debuffs so that we can then do our physical area attacks and get maximum damage out of them. This is a good party. I'm very pleased with myself for having not made terrible choices. I was a little worried, um, you know, it's been such a long time since I played the game, I was a little worried that I might make some bad choices just due to having forgotten how to be good at the game, but I think things are going alright. What a nice find! In the deep jungle you find a rare blooming stasis flower. It wilts with an interesting chemical process within an hour. However, if you take the artifact now, it remains in this beautiful form for years. You could also study the decay process instead. So we get three study for that, or we could take it right now and get an insight. An insight is going to turn out to be way more than three study for us. All right, let's take the insight. Oh, a supply node. Great. A shipwreck. The whole thing is unstable and might collapse. It's dangerous to salvage it, but an engineer might be skilled enough to, to uh, pull it off. So we could go for this. I'd really like these supplies, though. <laughs> Just make up a story about the boat and leave. I'd really like these supplies. I think we're going to have Earl go for this. Nobody's close to a level, that's not a concern. Yeah, two extra supplies is two extra nodes visited, which is going to turn out to be a lot of resources, probably. So let's let's not give ourselves uh, any higher of a chance of failing this than we absolutely have to. Earl caref carefully fixes unstable points in the vessel, making it safe to explore. It was not for nothing. So we find some fresh supplies and an amazing uh, chest full of treasure, so another treasure hunt token. That was a really good outcome. Alright, let's do some more encounters. Encounters are really, really good for us. You're walking through the jungle on a rainy day. There's a small hill you need to cross, and you orders the crew to walk in formation. You want someone who doesn't get lost to lead, and a strong individual to take up the rear. Well, Earl has the navigation perk, so that sounds like Earl should be in the lead. And then, uh, you strong. He's, he's a fighter, he's got a lot of attack power, he's got that athlete point. With Earl in front and you covering the rear, you walk through the slippery terrain. After an hour, Earl calls for a halt for a quick break. It then becomes apparent that you is missing. Nobody has seen or heard from him in a while. What do we do? So we could stay where we are and wait, which is what you're supposed to do when you get lost in the wilderness. Or we could go search and hope we don't make things worse. So we are getting a bonus from having a level 1 survivalist. If we succeed, we really increase our odds to do something in the future. If we fail, we decrease them. This is actually kind of a tough one. Well, you know, better than 50% chance here. Let's go for it. Well, you know, it was pretty close to a coin flip. Meanwhile, you stands up after slipping all the way down from where they were walking earlier. It's important to find the rest of the crew as soon as possible. There seems to be only one way toward where you came from. Alright. You walks through some trees toward the small path the crew was following before but it seems that a blue monkey has taken notice of you. He's sure he doesn't need backup from his monkey friends to take on a single human. Okay. You can definitely beat up a monkey. I feel very confident of that. Oh, look at all the tokens! Yeah, this is gonna be real good. So, yeah, he's, he'll still be far enough away that he won't get the first attack. Now, notice he's devious, so if we go in on him aggressive right away, it could end up pretty badly for us. But also, even with us having a debuff from being in the wrong attitude, there's no way he can take me in one hit, and I definitely will defeat him on my next turn, so let's just go aggressive so that we're sure we get the biggest possible uh, token supply out of this. Oh, and actually, we rolled high on damage and just defeated him instantly. That'll do, I suppose. You have dominated your opponents. That is a lot of good tokens. <laughs> you is usually more of a team player, but handling this situation really gives a confidence boost. Being alone in the jungle sure is dangerous. You makes haste to find the others. So this is the challenge we would have gotten the plus odds on if we had uh, passed that earlier roll. But it's mostly armor-based, apparently, and our armor is very high. <laughs> Now, 94% is not 100%, but it's pretty close. 
Yu finally finds the road you took before and is soon enough reunited with the rest of the crew, who are also searching. Earl, still in front, runs toward you in enthusiasm. Yu tells everyone about the slippery slope and the monkey attack. Everyone's glad he's okay. Alright, we got a little, little story out of that. Um, I guess I should explain, as that probably sounds dumb to people who haven't watched me play a lot of games that have, like, dice rolling in them. It's important to remember that 94% is not 100%, because your brain's gonna try to trick you into thinking, 94%, well that's guaranteed. And then when it fails, you're gonna be mad. This has happened to everybody, right? So I find it, <laughs> it helpful for me personally to remember that by just, you know, out loud, let's just acknowledge that there's a chance I could still fail this. Alright. So there's a, a bit of exploring left to do. There's still quite a few nodes up. I'm tempted to just run straight to this supply node via this path and ignore this thing entirely. Because a zero cost thing and then we get some supplies could mean that we get to go all the way through like the rest of these nodes. If we go over here, we have to spend a supply to move here and then we have to spend a supply to get here. So we end up two supplies lower than if we skip the node. Or if we skip this node and it's just a single challenge. Yeah, let's go this way right now. And then from here, once we figure out if we get these supplies or not, we'll be able to make some more decisions. So a branch hanging over a chasm gives you the possibility to take a shortcut. A balancing act is required to get to the other side and secure a rope for the others to pass. You was looking for a volunteer to walk across the branch. Well... It would be cool to get the two supplies. I wonder... Given how close we are and how little travel there is left to do, I wonder if it's worth going for the less likely roll just to try to get the extra encounter tokens, which are very valuable to us. I think it is. Let's try it. Because the, the penalty for failure here is just we don't get two supplies. But I'm honestly not even sure that we need both of them, right? Yeah, let's let's go for the let's go for the the bigger supply of tokens. Turns out 21% is a small number, but it's not 0%. <laughs> success! You balances across the branch with success and secures passage. To add to your fortune, the area you reach is bountiful with gems and food. Wow. So we got another payout at the end of that, in addition to the payout from the roll. Okay, well we're definitely going to go over here, grab this, and then swing through these blank ones. Maybe one of them will be the Hidden Horde. In such distant places, you are bound to make some discoveries about the nature of things. While exploring, you often ask someone to keep their eyes open for such discoveries. So who will be looking for natural oddities? Honestly, it's not 100% impossible that you could be level 4 by the time we do the boss, depending on the nodes in the fog. I'm gonna, once again, go for the lower chance, higher payout. The expected value of these rolls is better. Even if we failed a couple of them, I think we'd still be better off uh, in the end. A discovery. You manages to find a new type of beetle. While you is happy with the find, Yvonne is slightly disgusted. It's not really what she showed up for. Alright, let's swing through these. So right, if this is an encounter or a challenge that you can roll on, we go here, 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 here. This encounter will get you to level 4 before we do the fight, which will mean we'll have 3 levels of Tactician, which means we'll get a better buff for the boss fight. So picking you as the uh, as the roller had a couple of uh, things there. A couple of reasons to do it. Alright, mostly blank nodes are just blank nodes. Yeah, no hidden hoard for us. Oh, we found something interesting here. What a great place to camp with a beautiful clean creek. Yu tells everyone to prepare for a comfortable day. The crew spends their day relaxing, but then something interesting happens. Hmm. What is the interesting thing? Yu baffles someone. Earl, feeling smart, challenges Yu to a game of chess, anticipating an easy win. Earl gets destroyed by Yu's clever play and tactical moves. Earl is left speechless as Yu explains some new logic and psychology Earl never knew about. Turns out strategy is a forgotten science. I don't think it's forgotten, I think we know that. After a good day, the crew sits around a campfire and listens to one of Yvonne's great stories. The night becomes even more enjoyable when a delightful dinner is served by... So whoever we pick is going to get the cooking perk? Cooking is a survivalist perk. So I think we'll pick Earl here. Um, I know that I want to I want to get you to be a good jack-of-all-trades so that he can take a lot of rolls on. But there's also significant benefit to specializing people once they have a perk group. 
So I think let's go ahead and give uh, Earl's the one who will cook. An unbelievable combination of Caribbean ingredients and flavors from United States. Listen, sometimes the uh, sometimes the text fill in thing doesn't work exactly as you'd like. The crew is delighted by the meal. Earl's a fantastic cook. So Earl's the uh, American character. I think every character in the game is from a different country. Uh, on the downside, now Earl will have to endure the complaining of hungry crew members. But he got plus three spirit from that and also a free perk. It's pretty good. Unfortunately, we will not be able to level you up before the boss fight. But we get this, uh, this one last note here. The crew hears some noises coming from afar. You decides to take a look. Some of the monkeys you helped earlier are viciously attacking smugglers. They learned how to stand up for themselves. Hooray, monkeys! As the smugglers run away and leave their possessions, you take some of their gold. I'll be honest with you, I would rather have fought those smugglers myself. Myself? Myself. Singular. Just the one of me. But, uh, good for those monkeys. Alright, let's do it. So, we didn't have to take any hunger penalties here, and I think we did pretty well. We explored a lot of stuff. Finally, you find it. The Waterfall Rock. The treasure hidden by the notorious pirate Captain Roche must be here somewhere. This is the goal of the expedition. Let's do it. What a fantastic sight. No wonder that pirate Captain Roche chose this place to bury his treasure. The crew starts to look for clues and signs of treasure under the peerless guidance of you. Seems it will take longer than expected. Someone might want to set up a defensive camp while the other crew members continue searching and digging. You evaluates the issue, and he's great at this because it's a tactician thing. So all crew members will gain a buff for the fight, and also use uh, Adventure Wheel Payout is great. Even when you have 100%, uh, when you have a 100% chance to succeed at something, it doesn't show the wheel, but you still do get the XP as though you had rolled the wheel and everything. Alright, it looks like a bastion. You create a camp at a strategic location with a lookout and everything. Besides that, it was a good way to learn about the environment. You'll be prepared for any hostilities that come your way. To find the treasure, the crew spends hours looking for Roche's marks. The night passes and guard duties change, while the crew works diligently to uncover the secret treasure. It's not long the next morning until something happens. So we could get a collect token or a study token here. You know what, let's just... Let's just keep on our linear, huh? Treasure! After hours and hours of searching and digging, Yu's shovel finally hits a wooden chest. The crew opens it up to see the Spanish treasure in all its glory, surrounded by other precious pieces. The crew prepares to dig out Roche's treasure, when you hear a deep laugh from behind. It's the smuggler boss! I heard these rats were on my island, but I didn't think they would be so kind as to find this treasure for me. Get your paws off my booty, landlubbers! He hurls a heavy object toward you. He just straight up throws a depth charge at us. It's going to blow up and take some of the treasure with it! You need to take charge of the situation quickly! And by you, of course, we mean Earl. We could do this with you, but if we fail the roll, we'll lose a resolve. And this is actually completely guaranteed. Yeah, let's just take the guaranteed treasure hunt token and not getting blown up. I also like that part. With sweaty hands, Earl manages to defuse the old bomb, while apparently the pirates just watch, I guess. And then you're able to secure some valuables before the boss comes in. He confronts you. It seems you won't go down with just an old sea mine. We'll show you what happens when you disrespect my territory. Fellas, get the treasure and crush these landlubbers. That's the second time he's called me that. Who doesn't love land? What are you, crazy? Alright. So, we can convince the smugglers that they should maybe just let us go and also join up with our cause. We could break their confidence, or we could just beat the crap out of them. And I think you know how we're going to do, because it's kind of how we do. So he's all the way over here with his, uh, with his gun buddy. So we got plenty of time to take these guys down. So we started the fight with the jungle defenses buff, thanks to Wang Yu's uh, tactical abilities. And, I mean, there's not much to this one. Let's just uh, let's blow these first guys up real fast. And then we're going to have to rush the boss, because, like I said, uh, most boss fights from now on will feature infinite reinforcements. We are on the clock. So actually, we should probably be moving toward him as much as we can. Are these guys different? I think they're, I think, yeah, they're statistically identical. So it doesn't actually matter which one I take out. Yvonne doesn't quite have enough damage to guarantee a, a hit here. Oh, her Saddin will do the job, though. This is only showing the expected damage from the first hit of Saddin. Remember, we took that perk that gives it a second shot. The second shot only does half damage, but it's enough. 
our crew is um pretty evil. Slightly slightly evil, kind of mean. Something about it is more upsetting. Like if we were just shooting and blowing stuff up, that would be one thing. But something about the fact that we also make fun of you while we do it makes it feel worse, right? Am I the only one? Maybe I'm the only one. All right, don't really have anything compelling to do this turn. Ooh, I misestimated how fast that dude was. I thought we were going to be in the clear because the gun person couldn't get close enough to us, but uh, the pirate captain is a little faster than I had realized. All right, so we can throw out a group insult. Oh, wow. Group insult really doesn't deal that much damage. It's less than 100% of her uh, speech, but the weakness to enrage is going to make this work out splendidly. And I flipped us over to provocative. It's not going to matter. I guess, actually, if we both just attack, the pirate captain will still be provocative during their turn. But I think... I think I would rather switch back to aggressive. I think what I'm going to do here is we're just going to run down here. I'm going to take out this other pirate so we don't have to worry about getting attacked from behind. And this will mean we're aggressive during their turn. We don't have the defense buff, but I think it's the right thing to do. Remember, we're on the clock here a little bit. We will eventually get overwhelmed. Oh, he's charging up his laser. 75% bonus attack power. Okay. Well, the good news is we're at two resolves, and no matter what happens, we won't lose. And I'm pretty sure it's not an AoE attack. The other good news is I think we just beat him here. I don't think he's going to make it to do his attack. Because we do so much damage. Yeah. 74 is pretty good for the second expedition, I think. Alright, well that was easy enough. It will get harder, trust me. The smugglers lie defeated at your feet. You makes it clear that there is more of that to come if the smugglers don't leave this island quickly. The crew's physical prowess has intimidated the boss, and they run away, vowing to leave you and the island alone. Without those irksome outlaws to bother you, you can retrieve Roche's treasure easily. Great. Okay, so... This is a very significant boost to the amount of gold produced by treasure hunt tokens, and this will affect every treasure hunt token for the rest of the game. We could also take plus three study on survivalist spins on Earl. Uh, we don't have a naturalist, so actually I don't even know what would happen if we took this. Probably the way it works is whoever's currently, whoever, when it says current, it probably doesn't mean right now. It probably means at the time of the spin, if your highest level naturalist hits it, you get three study. Um, so this probably isn't actually worthless, but maybe we should just take this. Earl does still have to make a lot of spins. It's, you know, scientists are important. This is so much money. I kind of think I'm going to take this, honestly. Plus 20 to 25 gold from treasure hunt tokens. So that's 60 to 75 gold right away. Because these aren't scored yet. Yeah, I'm going to take this one. Money's good. It looks magnificent. The scent of gold fills the air. With Roche's treasure in your hands, the expedition is a success. You can proudly return to London with this old Spanish treasure. Well done. Yeah. Yeah, I do feel that it was well done. Thanks, game. Thanks, omnipresent narrator. So this is a great treasure for us. This was fine. We got six encounter tokens because we're at three levels of rivalry now. This is working out really well. Yeah, and then also all of these. This is, this is a lot of stuff. I'm feeling pretty good about it. 636 research. Not too shabby. So you can see we're already at 882 Renown after the second expedition. And as you can imagine, Renown uh, accelerates pretty fit, pretty quickly as you go on. Okay, so with that great adventure behind you, you can send a report to an explorer welcoming city. This will unlock new possibilities on the world map. So we can send a report to Constantinople to unlock a new entourage hole. Hall. Hall. Listen, there are a lot of vowel sounds in the English language. 
Sometimes it takes a couple of tries to find the right one. So we can unlock a new Entourage Hall, from which we can recruit more people. But we don't really have enough status to even make full use of the Entourage Halls we already have access to. Or, we can send it to New Orleans to unlock a new equipment shop and a modest Entourage Hall. So we get... We get an Entourage Hall and a shop either way. I think I want New Orleans. If I remember correctly, I think the Entourage Hall that opens up in New Orleans is a little bit more suited to our... To our tastes, anyway. Greetings, Explorer. We down here in New Orleans read all about- I'm not gonna try to do a New Orleans accent. We down here in New Orleans read all about your amazing adventures. Just so you know, our shops in downtown New Orleans have special offers just for people like you. I hope to see you soon. So, we've opened up a new Entourage Hall. Yep. So this Entourage Hall has a person at it- this is what I was remembering. We could get another encounter token for resolving encounters aggressive. And, we got enough XP from that boss fight to level up uh, you again. So, I think we're definitely just going to keep sticking to Tactician. He unlocked his second trinket slot. He's, uh, he's really coming along. He's quite powerful, I think. So, let's figure out where we want to spend our resources, and then we'll probably call it for this video. We will, uh, we will continue, of course. But we know we're doing this. Let's go ahead and do this. So, encounter tokens are even better now. We're going to start every expedition with a tool. A tool is something that you can uh, you can use it before an adventure wheel roll to improve your chances by 25%. And then if you fail the roll, even with the bonus, you get the tool back. Very, very nice to have. We definitely want to gain additional encounter tokens. Careful studies of different people all over the world has increased your knowledge on how to gain more from an encounter. You is, uh, you has to decide on what kind of approach you will specialize in. Gee, I wonder. Yes, let's gain extra encounter tokens for resolving aggressively. And then, you know what, I think maybe we should uh, gain extra encounter tokens for resolving aggressively. And then, I suppose, we should get some supplies when resolving aggressively. That feels pretty okay. So, we still have enough science to unlock one more... Uh, paper and after we spend our insight probably enough to unlock another paper after that so We could finish off anthropology This will make it so that we get extra encounter tokens when spending insight with diplomats and archaeologists um, It's not bad Can we get you to be a level 4 archaeologist before we spend encounter tokens right now? Let's see so I know there's a shop, or there's an item in this shop that we might want to give him. That'll give him a point of, uh, archaeologist. And then we did have... We have a couple of specialists available who can do it as well. We have to be careful with the amount of uh, money we have to spend to get them, though. So there's no archaeologist available here. We'd have to spend 50, and then I think another 100 to unlock this guy. And we don't have enough status to get 150 spent plus 400. Oh, this is actually even the same perk as the items. This wouldn't get us to four anyway. There was somebody at one of the other shops that could teach archaeology, wasn't there? Ah, uh, that's a shame. She's pretty deep in here. But she does only cost 200. So if I wanted to pick... No, there's nothing relevant here. Okay. So if I wanted to pick Handsome Tuco up, that's 350. We have to upgrade it and then we have to buy him. That'll leave us with 420 left. Yeah, we should have enough status to do that. So let's do that. Let's go for... Alright, just making sure that I'm in the right place. Well, hold on. So it's, it's possible to get to level 4 archaeology. So we could get one extra encounter token if we choose to spend our uh, insight with you, which seems like a smart thing to do, given how good our encounter tokens are. But is it better than spending our research on something else is the real question. So now we have all of the trees unlocked. This tree mostly is about um, status stuff. This tree is about gold, and this tree is about research. 
Now, we do have kind of a research flavor to our stuff going on so far, right? We can improve our discovery tokens and then make it so we get a discovery token every time we get a treasure. Uh, we could get study tokens when spending insight with various types of people. Supplies for each research tree area that we've completely gotten all the stuff out of. And then at the bottom here, a treasure. And I believe what this treasure does is it gives you extra tokens when you spend insight. Or we could go into gold. The thing I'm thinking is that we just got an upgrade, a significant upgrade, to the value of our uh, treasure hunt tokens. And we could get a treasure hunt token for every time we get a treasure, plus research from our collect tokens. And then we could do a gold-focused adventure, like the one I'm kind of thinking of for our third adventure. This might be a good way to go. Oh, except that we would have to unlock this. We'd get another tool. But we can't actually get this unless we end up with enough research to do three more papers, right? And unfortunately, that seems unlikely. Given that the next one costs 150, the, ne the one after that will probably be like 180, and then the one after that will be even more. There's no way we're going to have enough research to do three papers. So maybe the thing to do is just grab this so that we can get some extra encounter tokens right now. And then um, get the beginning of engineering unlocked and we'll finish. Yeah, we'll finish. We'll, we'll do all this stuff. We'll get really good at collecting gold. We have rogue and engineer. We could probably get uh, Yvonne to be a level three rogue, right? Yeah, maybe, uh, maybe a good gold focus, sort of switching gears from research to gold would be wise at this point. But I think we will take this. Okay, and I guess we'll gain 25 renown whenever we finish an encounter aggressive. We don't care about our renown right now. Okay, so the next one's 200. We do have to spend two insight before we leave, so we probably will get up to 200 for the engineering unlock. But we're not spending any of our insight just yet. So let's go ahead and pick up the things that we want to pick up. Oh, this is the wrong place. So we know we want to do this. Handsome Tuco fits into our linear extremely well. And then we want to pick up Dr. Eligard. So you already knows legends. We'll get architecture here. I'm really glad I didn't take architecture from the uh, from the perk that we got from the research paper so you will learn architecture and then we'll go to the item shop we'll upgrade it twice apparently by in this trowel and broom and now he's a level four archaeologist and uh, opponents adjacent to him have minus 10 speech defense which will be good for Yvonne it's good for you to run right up on people anyway because of his point blank uh, fireworks AoE and stuff. So I think this is good. And we have 750 money to spend on other gear in a second here. But before we do that, let's figure out what we want to do with this 146 extra, or rather, what we want to do with this 90 extra status. So we can't hire a specialist for 90, obviously. But we can get a helper. Uh, I guess the only one that really makes sense for us to get is this one, because we're going to be using... Right, this option seems pretty good to me. So 32 to 48 research, 16 to 22 gold. So actually, he's he's better at getting research than Earl is now. So we'll do this. This should get us to 200. Yeah, this will get us to 200. So we'll be able to write that other research paper. And in addition, it's going to give me 12 to 19 status per... Uh, point spent. Oh, we can't actually even buff up the status, but we can do this and get extra gold from it. And then also, I mean, we're going to get a ton of other encounter tokens, so... Yeah, I think we want to do this. The debate there really was, do I want to buy my helper to improve the amount of money I'm going to get out of this insight, or do I want to spend the insight, get the status from doing that, and then use that to buy a different helper? But I think this is the right way to go. So we have to spend two insight, we're only allowed to carry five over.
All right, and that'll get us another tool. It's pretty handy. And now we uh, now we need to spend the rest of our money. So the item shop in New Orleans has a bunch of different trinkets in it. And then it also has a lot of different books. So these are all speech power focused. And then they also improve the power of specific speech type attacks. So we probably want to buy a blue book for Yvonne. Um, her having double sadden makes these really, really powerful. The Book of Sadness. Spoiler alert, the puppy dies. That, That is sad. We can also buy more generic stuff here. Uh, the Obviously, the books in New Orleans are a little bit better, but they're also a little bit more expensive at the same sort of tiers of damage. And then we do still need to buy defensive items as well. I think we probably ought to get Earl some armor. How much armor? So let's see, we can sell this back for 37... Sell this for seven. I mean, we're not. We're gonna replace that for sure. So if we buy him 450 gold armor. I wouldn't mind picking up the 400 gold book. So it's gonna be 480 gold. So we probably can't afford to go really nuts on offensive items. And Earl doesn't really need a huge amount of extra offense. Let's let's go ahead and upgrade this. We'll swap this book over to Earl. It does give him one attack power, and then five extra speech power for when he needs to speech. Actually, it might even be better to do this the other... Yeah. Maybe that's better. And then we'll buy this Master Book of Sadness. So Ivan is capable of just blowing dudes the heck up now. And then for Earl's armor, there's no way we can get to 450, but we can buy him this at least. Then we have 170 left. With which we could buy another perk for somebody. We could buy a point of Diplomat for Yvonne. She's our speaker, she doesn't have Diplomat right now. And Diplomat can be important. A lot of challenges need it. Start every encounter excited. Uh, excited gives you plus speech, so this wouldn't be a terrible thing to put on her either. What do we have available in the other shop, trinket-wise? Uh, we're at 170. We can't we can't really get to 200 easily, right? Yeah, we'd have to sell a real item. So probably these are not are not really available. We could have somebody gain naturalist electromagnetics. Oh, we could buy this for her. Diplomat. This gives her a point in diplomat. It also gives her some speech power, and even more speech power some of the time. You know what? I think this is a good. That's a good item for her. So her speech power is really high. Remember, Earl's actually at 44 attack power during times that we're aggressive. And Yu is capable of dealing out some debuffs and basically just getting in there and mixing it up with people. He has a lot of extra spirit. Okay, I think we're uh, we're in pretty good shape. We are definitely ready to go. So, this is where we're headed next. The Egyptian Expedition. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you're enjoying uh, this little mini-series. Come back next time. We're headed to Egypt, and we're just going to steal everything that isn't nailed down. And we'll see you then.